mid-December 2012. And we're about to go dog sledding. Dog sledding in Mongolia. Okay. Bloody wonderful. Okay. Slow down, come on, fall in behind. That's it. This is, uh, this is dog sledding in, uh, in Mongolia. Come on, fall in behind. Oh God, this is fun. It's so peaceful and beautiful, and uh, the dogs, when you stop, start barking like hell because they want to. Uh, they want to run, but when they're running, they're uh, they're very quiet. Falling behind, falling behind. Okay, go. behind, come on, righto, now you can go, go, go! This is the uh, little village we're staying in tonight, middle of nowhere Mongolia, wild dog sledding. As night is starting to settle in, I'm thinking it can't be much different from villages like this years ago. No electric lights are lighting up, no sound of television or cars, just animals in their winter hideaways and people snuggling down in front of firewood. Brilliant. It's peaceful. The dogs run along quietly when they're running. They get noisy when they're not. And the uh, little sled is almost silent on the snow. It's uh, it's a wonderful, peaceful getaway. Uh, Chris Hewison and Jonathan Hayden, you really don't know what you missed out on. Stopping for a quick bite to eat for lunch and the dogs are reminding us they don't like standing still, hence the barking. Have you ever thought about having a campfire on a river before? Not on a river bank, on a river. I'm standing on water. I'm walking on water. It's just frozen. It's about minus 30 or something at the minute, actually. Uh, but gee, it's beautiful.
goal! It's like turning the volume off straight away. Without a doubt, the moment they start running again, it's like, yippee, this is what we wanted to do. Let us run, let us run, let us run. This is the uh, Mongolian dog sled journey. Standing backwards on the sled so I got the sun in my face so you can see. But oh, what a beautiful place it is. Look at the scenery around here. Oh, it is magnificent. It's cold. I've got to say, we're getting close to the minus 50. And if you remember a few months ago I was in Arizona, it was 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 50 degrees Celsius. And I reckon we're getting really close to minus 50. explain how many clothes you're wearing when you uh, go dog sledding is to show you what it looks like when they all come off. So we've already got first layers of gloves off and there's second layer of glove then there's third layer of glove 
Underneath is the inner cashmere lining. That's the fourth layer of gloves. The four layer on the hands. On the head, you got this wonderful hat, which is now starting to thaw out. And you've got the beanie, and you've got the cashmere liner hat, and the scarf, which wraps around your head as well. And then you've got the overcoat on the outside. That's your uh, last layer of protection, above which you've got the uh, fleece. Underneath that, you've got your water bottle, which is underneath two layers of clothing, because otherwise your water would freeze. And then you've got this beautiful cashmere sweater, which is fantastic. No need to panic yet. We're a long way from completely uh, undone. On the cashmere, you've then got the first layer of the uh, Katmandu exterior thermals that go right down to your wrist. And then underneath that, you've got another layer of thermals which goes on oh. and then under that you've got another layer of thermals with your wonderful cashmere forearm protectors which go all the way over your wrist and there's another one two three uh, four and then five layers underneath. That's what you wear dog sledding in Mongolia. You know, I think you get used to the cold. It's, I don't know, minus 20 or minus 30, something like that. It's uh, morning before we go dog sledding. I've just been in the, the washroom. Oh, that delicate way of putting it. But the washroom out here is a hole in the ground out in the trees over there. You squat for your morning thick. And it's minus 20. Come on, we're not going yet, boys. It's minus 20, something or other. And you're just sinking there. And you're kind of used to it. Now, I'm out here now, no gloves, no hat. I'll grant you in a few minutes, my uh, hands will start to hurt. So let me go in for breakfast. We're not going yet. Oh. They do get excited. Um, anyway, so you can see how people would adjust to living in gears uh, when it's cold. You do adjust. Mind you, here I am saying I'm adjusting. I'm wearing about five frigid layers of clothing, but that doesn't help you in the long drop. Whew. We're now, uh, we're now day three into the uh, dog sledding trip. That's three days and with our power and running water. <coughs> three days without cell phone, three days without email, three days without iPads. I've got no idea what's happening in the world. It's wonderful. just going through now you might be tempted to think of a steam and it kind of is in a sub-zero way that when the temperatures are this cold even sub-zero down at minus 20 it looks like steam coming off the water's edge like on a hot bath but it's actually ice going up into the air and then you get little crystal things falling, forming on the surface of the ice that looks like snow falling, but it's actually not snow falling, it's ice coming up. Hey, Jono and Lenka, if you're watching this, recognize the glasses? That was about five years ago you gave these to me.
Mongolian landscape as we're zooming along on our dog sled. I've got to tell you something. This is a uh, really peaceful place. was safe and fine and without a problem we get reminded of something zooming down the middle of the uh, uh, river ice broke and in went Joel and Olivia into the water so the first thing you need to do when that happens when it's minus lots is stop and make a very big fire right Olivia is steaming all over from head to toe <laughs> That's what happens when you fall in the ice in the water and sit by a fire. How do you feel, Olivia? Pretty awesome, actually. Really? Try it sometimes. A near-death experience and freezing to death, and your expression is, I feel awesome. Uh, quite some stuff, I think. <laughs> Look how much she's steaming. <laughs> sunny day, ice cubes forming on my eyelashes. Oh, lovely. dog sledding. It's uh, been quite cold but absolutely stunningly beautiful. 
If you look closely, you can see my eyelashes and eyebrows are frozen. <clears throat> my next holiday is going to be somewhere warm. It's going to involve a beach and a pina colada and a sauna and a masseur and showers because we've now gone five days where you've had to wash in the snow in the morning. So you run out in your jocks and boots and rub some snow all over you like this. Good morning. Dog sledding in the middle of nowhere, but you still got to wash. Do you think this look will ever take on? Oh. <laughs> Bloody nuts cold, that is, I tell you. Hoo, hoo, hoo. But this has been a lot of fun. So, Olivia, reflections. What do you think of dog sledding? Dog cold. Pardon? Dog cold. It's damn cold, is it? Yes. <laughs> is it worth doing? Oh, yeah, totally. Well, the dog sledding certainly has been cold and it's taken us to some remote and beautiful parts of Mongolia, as if you need the word remote when talking about Mongolia. Oh, magnificent. Beautiful clean air. Other than the dogs, it's quiet. Listen. How many places in the world can you go when it sounds like that? You know, one thing that has surprised me a bit is how fast you do acclimatise here. You know, it looks nice and sunny and we've got a fire in the background here. But let's not kid ourselves about it being warm. It's actually cold now. Here's the edge of the scarf and that's ice just coming off the edge of it. My whiskers are a little bit frozen, just there. And I've still got some ice on the ice eyelashes. Yet after five days of being in a wild, beautiful area like this, you don't feel the cold in the same way anymore. It's got to be now. Joel, what do you reckon the temperature is right now? 30. Minus 30? Yeah. Okay, it's minus 30. I would never have thought that I'd be standing outside in nothing but a hat and two layers of gloves with my jacket unzipped in minus 30. But that's how much you can quickly acclimatize to being in the forest with some friends around a campfire and some coffee. And this morning we learnt that when our fire went out about two o'clock in the morning inside our gear, and we rustled around, we got some water. It was getting very cold. I mean, the, the glass of water I had next to my bed had the film of ice that had frozen. The vodka that we left outside the gear had frozen. Now, vodka freezes when it's about 10 degrees colder than the alcohol content, and it was about 28% uh, alcohol vodka, so therefore minus about 38. Was it 28 or 38% proof, that vodka? Huh? <laughs> All right, wrong. I was 10 degrees wrong. The vodka was uh, 38 proof, therefore it's about minus 48, therefore getting close to that minus 50. But uh, our fire had gone out, and by the time we'd got some more wood and figured out how to relight it again, we huddled around this little fire and think, oh, it's starting to get warm. And as I said, warm, the steam came out of the mouth like that as well. So it was still sub-zero. The ice was still sheened on top of my glass of water next to my bed. And I'm like, oh, it's starting to warm up. It's surprising how the body does acclimatise here. Anyway, enough blah blah about the cool and the temperature. You need to come to Mongolia and have a look at some of this beautiful nature. I mean, how do you undersell this? Middle of nowhere, Mongolia. This is the team from Winds of Mongolia, Bayana and Joel. And I can highly recommend that if you're going to come to Mongolia, which you should do, you should come with Winds of Mongolia and you should come dog sledding. They know all sorts of complicated things like how the heck do you open the bloody lunchbox? Thank you. Where we go? So, five days we've been on the dog sleds, having lunch around fires on the river, 
and it's been beautiful. So, Baena, enjoy it. Merci beaucoup. Eh? Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, just so you know how cold it is. It's My lip up. just stuck to the bloody fork. <laughs> <laughs> What's the website? It's extreme-mongolia.com, yeah? Hmm? Your website, extreme-mongolia.com. <laughs> Visit extreme-mongolia.com. Uh,